In this video, a tutorial to store Puer at home, from the simplest way to the most comprehensive and complex Pumidor. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. And if you want to enjoy tea, and in particular poor, you probably sooner or later will start thinking how do I have to store poor at home? Because you know that poor, very differently from green tea for example, evolve and get better over time. So you ask yourself how do I have to do at home? Which is the best solution that it doesn't cost me too much effort or more effort than I actually want to put into it to store poor at home. We've already done a few videos about uh, poor storage. There was uh, a basic video that I made at the beginning just to give you an overview. Then there was another one where we questioned about uh, dry and wet storage, whether it is really about humidity. And there was also a live streaming from Sigi that explained to you how actually he stores poor at home in which Pumidor and also his thought generally about Puerm so that you don't have to listen only my voice but also his voice. However, no need to have a look at those videos before you watch this one. You can watch them later on. All the content in those videos that is needed for this one will be sure to be repeated. Anyway, at the end of this video and also in the description below, you will find the links to those videos if you want to have a look at those. So now let's get started. Poor at home. So what's what's important? Well, let me say one important thing that I want to tell you today. I have a lot of content to tell you. So take your time, take like me a poor, sit down, enjoy the video, enjoy your tea. You cannot be on a hurry because as I say there is a lot of things that I want to tell you. So first of all, we said you want to store poor at home. So the most important thing that you need to know is which are your conditions at home, temperature and humidity. It doesn't matter where you live in the world, what matters is not the temperature outside, but the temperature inside. And I want to give you a practical example. I am actually monitoring both temperature and humidity at home, and in particular in the box in which I keep my shampoo. So let me show you at the graphs. These are actually the temperature outside and inside over the past uh, uh, months. So I've stopped recording here at the beginning of February when I was preparing this video and as you see the uh, external temperature varied quite a lot and on average we had over those months 7 degrees centigrade outside. It's not too cold for being in winter because I live in Alabama and here there is a a quite warm and subtropical weather actually and you see that indoor the temperature was much higher didn't vary that much and on average it was 19 degrees centigrade so fairly warm actually now if we look at uh, the um, the humidity I have another chart for that here you see that the humidity varied quite a lot outside this is the red curve and on average outside to 73% which for winter is fairly high but inside in my home I had on average only the average here is 45% relative humidity so much much lower than outside so what matters is the temperature and the humidity at home and if you don't have a and a way of measuring heat what you can uh, judge is that the following first of all the temperature you know Every one of us more or less is between 18 and 22 degrees centigrade in winter for sure. In summer, if you live in a warm place, you will probably use AC and you will have also that kind of temperature. About humidity, in summer is closer to the humidity outside unless you use AC, in that case is lower, easily below 50%. And in winter, since you are heating inside at home, the humidity will be lower than outside. And you see here my example, so I live in a place that I say there's a subtropical climate. We have on average during the year 70% humidity about and an average temperature of 18 degrees centigrade, which is similar to what you have, for example, in Kunming in China, but at home I have a very different condition. In particular, constant temperature over the year and dry, relatively dry. So once you know the condition at home, 
you want to ask yourself do I want to do a dry or wet storage and here first of all you can regulate both you can regulate temperature and humidity and I will show you later uh, exactly how to do that and um, the temperature also affect if it is a wet or dry storage not also only the humidity we don't go into details we have a dedicated video on the dry and wet storage have a look at that but uh, just to say that when you want to control temperature usually you never go above 40 degrees centigrade and it is quite common in the poor world to stick about 30 30 32 degrees centigrade if you really want to control the temperature about humidity even if you do wet storage you don't really want to go above 80 percent more standard values are about uh, 65 maybe 70 percent uh, so this is just to give you a reference if you look at all the other video and you uh, read around you will find out also uh, more information about that and you will make made up your mind make up your mind about what you actually want to do with your tea now let's start from the very basic storage condition first of all i am personally i like dry storage I don't mind even very dry this is a cake that was stored in dry condition and I, I like it a lot so what if you also actually don't mind having a dry storage or if you live in a very humid place and it's also fairly humid at home you can simply put your pour on a shelf what I suggest doing there is separating shoe from shen yeah they can be on the same shelf but you know a little bit far away don't have light direct light direct sunlight hitting on the on the poor cake because they are with this wrap paper it is quite transparent and you have a lot of energy and uv that comes from the sun and heat on your cake that's it's not good and you want to keep them away from uh, sources of other odors like uh, away from the kitchen or even possibly away from your uh, sleeping room so say that that's the simplest way on a shelf but it's possible to do more than that. And what about if you want to control humidity? Well, the simplest way to control uh, humidity is actually to use, uh, um, to put your tea in a closet. Um, it's important that it's a relatively small closet, so you don't want to take a huge uh, closet because you won't be able to control the humidity in there, like a fairly small one and that you can fill with your pour something you know this dimension maybe about 40 liters and there what you can do you have two options the first one is you can control the humidity inside the whole closet for that it helps if you use the ceiling on the door so that it's really a little bit more uh, airtight and uh, what i suggest using is uh, uh, boveda packs boveda packs let me show you uh, i have uh, i have them here on the computer and I can show them to you so so Boveda is a, a small pack here that you see here in this picture um, you see here the list of uses is made for controlling humidity there is cannabis there is tobacco there is hemp there is a uh, hood instruments there is no poor because we still have to make it uh, um, we are not yet that popular with poor but nonetheless this is fine and you see this comes in these small bags there are different sizes but uh, for your poor there are two sizes that you really want uh, to look at one is uh, the size 60 and the other one is the size 320 what uh, the uh, size uh, tell you is uh, uh, how much water actually there is in the bags and there are different levels of uh, humidity for those two sizes they go from 65% uh, to 84% with some steps in between how do they work? you basically put those packs inside your closet you close it and you seal it as, much, as well as you can and they will regulate the relative humidity inside the closet and uh, they will regulate it relatively quickly but it will take some time for you poor to adapt to that uh, be aware that poor absorb a lot of water much more than the air is able to so you might have to replace those but more or less for a 40 liter closet you are looking about using either one 320 uh, package or 560 
I suggest using Rater many small, like five times the size 60, so that you can distribute them a little bit better. What is important, don't put the pack on your cake, because the risk is that uh, you will have uh, a higher water content next to the pack, because from there comes the water. Inside those packs there is a, a saturated salty solution, water and salt, and from there comes the water. They don't last forever, so you will realize that when the pack is getting a little bit um, stiff and hard and is no more soft, then it's time to change it. So this is the simplest way. However, as we said, in your closet, you, you might not have a small closet, for example, you might have only a large one, so what to do? You can actually use containers. You can use um, containers to store your poor. In that case, you can use even a larger closet and maybe use several containers so that you can, for example, distinguish between Shu and Sheng or between different uh, uh, places where the poor come from or uh, whatever, you know, different years. And then when you seal actually your cakes inside the container, you can apply a Boveda pack just on the lid inside the container. Again, don't put it just in, uh, in contact with the cake. You are just safer if you put it and you attach it to the lid. Here, you know, for a small container, you can put one, maximum two, size 60, and uh, you're good for a while. But be aware that at the very beginning, if your poor were stored in a dry place, they will absorb a lot of water. So you want to have a look because within a few weeks, you might have to change it one time because then your poor have already reached the, the right level of moisture and is in equilibrium with the, water, with the air. And after that, you can, when you replace, the other one will last much longer. Which type of container to use? Uh, you can use a porcelain container, you can use glass container if it is inside, so you, in, the, in the closet you don't have light, so it would be okay. If you have nothing else, you can use plastic, but be aware that plastic is not odor free, so it might release some odors. Very fancy is going for um, Ishin, Ishin containers. Uh, it's also quite traditional in China to store poor in Ishin container but of course it comes at a cost and they are not so easy to find. But this gives you a little bit of your option. I'm sure that glass container is fairly easy to find. And I need a little bit more tea because this is just the start of the story. For now we are, we are looking how we, um, how we actually control the humidity in a closet, but uh, we will look now also at how to control temperature and we will look also at how to monitor the condition of your cake. All right, so which is the next step? We have said on the shelf, in the closet, in the container inside the closet, the next step is a pumidor. What is a pumidor? A pumidor is a box to humidify poor, more or less. And uh, uh, which box to use? The box can be, you know, whichever box you, you find, but what I suggest is using something that uh, is also thermally insulating, especially if you want to control temperature. And, uh, um, and you can use uh, uh, any, you know, any box, for example, you can go for uh, um, Styropor, um, and uh, this is insulating, it's quite cheap, uh, and if you, take a size of about 40 liter, you can put quite some poor inside. And uh, um, I will now show you, because I made a sketch, I will show you how to set up your, uh, your pomidor. But the, the very basics is actually using it the same way you have used the container. So you put your tea inside, you apply your uh, uh, bovida packs on the lid, again important, on the lid. You close it and you keep it there for storing your, uh, your tea. You don't control the humidity, but you know that Boveda will adapt to the humidity you have selected between 65 and 84%, whichever pack you have uh, you've chosen. However, if you want, you can go one step farther and you can even monitor the humidity inside the container. The container. So you will know, for example, if the tea is still absorbing water or it has reached an equilibrium and the percentage that is written on the Boveda package is actually the one that uh, you have reached inside the box. 
Um, I have selected for you one example of, uh, um, of basically a um, um, of basically a sensor that is able to record both humidity and temperature so you can use also for the next level pomidor that I will explain uh, soon and uh, um, I will show that to you uh, in a second so basically um, is this one this is the one that really I'm using at home right now it uh, um, doesn't cost very much uh, it cost uh, here in the US about $40 uh, it say it monitors uh, temperature, it monitors humidity, and you can uh, download the data. So it make a log. For example, in my case, I'm monitoring um, one measurement every 15 minutes, and then I can download and I can create those charts that uh, um, I've showed to you uh, before. So this is just in case you want to monitor the humidity. If you go for temperature also control then for sure you have because you need uh, you you don't have uh, these uh, boveda packs also for temperature that you put the package inside and regulates the temperature to that level at least i haven't seen those you will need an active system that i will show you soon to regulate the temperature as well just a second okay so at this point, let's move on and let's see how can you transform this box, this Pumidor, into a, into a box in which you both regulate temperature and humidity. You have to be careful though, because regulating the temperature doesn't come without risk. It comes with risk that I will mention towards the end of the video. So stick with me if you want to know that. Something was already mentioned by uh, Sigi in his video. And actually, Sigi mentioned that um, his methodology that he's using for his Pumidor was inspired by the blog of uh, uh, Marco Gualtieri. I will put also a link in the description below so that you can lo lo look also at his setup and which experiments he has already done. And taking inspiration from him, you probably uh, get also some idea, better idea about how you want to store your team. All right. So let's have a look at uh, the Pumidor for controlling temperature and humidity. So basically you take your box, you take your box and uh, you apply a heater, an heating element on the bottom of the box. And I will show you soon how um, the, you can find these heating elements. Uh, I have selected a couple of Amazon so that you can find on this website some keyword. I put those links in the description below, but I will show them to you in a second. And uh, here you have the heating element on the, on the bottom of the box, and then you want to apply a spacer. You want to apply a spacer to avoid that your pour sit directly on the heater. Please avoid that because when the heater is running, it will run at high temperature locally, and you don't want to burn the paper um, of, uh, of your pour. So, um, think of some way of using some spacer. The best is if the spacer that you're using is actually some holes in it so that the hair can easily warm up from the heater into the whole uh, box. Now, when you put the, the spacer inside, uh, you can do actually also, you have to do a hole in the box so that you can feed the wire of the heater outside to a power source and uh, uh, warming it up and actually you don't need only a power source but you need also a controller i will show you soon how that works so that the temperature is regulated and no matter which is the temperature outside inside your insulated box the temperature is kept constant then you um, might want also to monitor the humidity so you can use the, the sensor that uh, I've showed you before, you can uh, apply it inside. Uh, Sometimes it comes with uh, a wire, with a sensor wire, so that you can keep actually the the sensor itself, or the, not the sensor, but the, the box basically outside, and just feed the sensor through the hole to the inside of the box. And um, I have also here applied five uh, Boveda uh, packs on the lid. And now what is missing? Only my pour. So I simply place the pour inside and I'm ready to go. So this is a complete setup, but let me show you quickly the heating element and the controller because those are the tricky aspects. 
and uh, I said I've selected a few um, a few for you so let me find the right page first of all this is the blog from um, of Marco Guartieri if you want to have a look you see here he's doing a, um, a heated storage with four years of heated storage so it, it shows you some example you see the difference in color between the leaves show you some examples so that you know a little bit what to expect out of your storage and then here I have uh, a heating element that you can find in the US on Amazon and saying you find these links in the description below you don't have to buy this one but these would serve the purpose you need about 20 watt to keep uh, easily keep the temperature inside a well insulated 40 liter box just to give you an idea more or less if the the box is double the size you can go with double the power and um, you can also find um, something similar in uh, uh, you can also find something similar in Europe so here there is another example it costs uh, 35 euros and it works in the same way so how this thing works it is a heating element with a wire and a plug and uh, to use it you actually need a controller like this one how does this controller work? The controller is actually attached to your socket, to your power at home, but it has also a socket itself on which the heater is applied. So you have your controller, the controller is attached to your wall, you attach the heaters on the controller, on the controller you set the temperature, this part is staying outside and then you feed through the box the heater. So you don't have to put the controller inside the box you can take it out you can keep it out you set the temperature and the controller does the rest and regulate the temperature over time uh, i have also an um, an option here in um, for uh, uh, european market uh, this is from amazon uh, germany 22 euros and you have uh, pretty much the same uh, um, the same thing okay so this was uh, about controlling temperature and humidity in your box and uh, now what else you can do well you you might like actually to monitor your temperature and humidity what for example if you leave home and you want to be sure that uh, everything is working fine or you simply want to um, record the temperature over time you can use the logger that I showed you before but you could also use some remote sensors so working with uh, bluetooth and wi-fi that even is able to stream when you are on vacation and you want to check which is the condition of your power at home but before looking at that i want to show you one more thing so before i showed you actually that in the box you put all the power inside with your bovida pack on the lid and you just wait you eat it up if you want to and uh, that's it but there is also another way that uh, um, is saving some Boveda packs and allows you to, to I think a better control also of the condition for sure so let me show that to you I have another sketch for that and uh, how that uh, how that works so basically you use exactly the same box you have still the same uh, heater in the bottom then you have your spacer but then in addition to uh, the, 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 the area where you put your cake, you have also a separated closet box, okay? And this is your conditioning box. What does it mean? You put in this box the cake when you want to bring the cake in equilibrium with the relative humidity that you want to achieve. So when you take the cake from uh, a dry place, let's say 40% humidity, the cake is fairly dry. When you put it in a humid place, it takes weeks until it absorbs the water and it reaches equilibrium with the environment. Um, probably even easily even a month it may take, depending also on the level of humidity that you apply. So what do you do? You actually use a separated box. You apply the Bovida pack again on the lid of this box and you put your few cakes that you want to condition inside that box. Now you can either wait one, one and a half months or you can use the same sensor that I showed you before to monitor the humidity inside the, the container and when you see that it has reached equilibrium to the level that is written on your Boveda pack then you are good to go. You can remove those conditioned cakes 
you put them in a mylar bag. Why mylar? Because mylar has a low uh, permeability, so it's, uh, it doesn't exchange easily uh, air with the exterior. So if you seal the mylar bag, uh, the humidity that you have inside will stay there for quite a long time. So you take a mylar bag, you put your cakes that have already been conditioned inside, you seal it and you put it inside your box. You don't need to apply Boveda packs inside the big box because the condition will be kept inside the mylar. Okay, and this is the second setup that I wanted to show you with, uh, the, uh, with the conditioning. And now let's look about uh, um, how to monitor the condition in your pomidor. So one option actually is offered by Boveda themselves. And uh, let me show that to you quickly. It is, uh, they call it Butler. And you see here Boveda butter for cannabis, again, again, not necessarily for cannabis, you can use it for poor. Uh, it costs $40, and so now it is out of stock on their website, but you might be able to find that on other shop. It's a fairly small, uh, uh, you see it here with respect to a smartphone, it's a fairly small uh, device that uh, connects with your phone via Bluetooth. And if you want, you can use multiple of them up to five with the same app and they monitor temperature and humidity 24 7 for you so this is an option you can you can actually go for uh, i'm not so sure if it would be able to transmit from inside the mylar bag but you can try if that works you can even put one of these items inside each mylar bag and from your app you would be able to check the condition inside the bag so you know when uh, uh, if there is a leak, for example, something like that. Now, this uh, um, solution works if you are at home and your phone is connected via Bluetooth with uh, the butler. But what if you leave home? I'm not so sure that you can make this thing working over uh, Wi-Fi and then to to access uh, on uh, on a local IP address that you can access remotely. But there is certainly ways to do that and I want to show you one and I will give you some information for the more um, geeky of you that want to, uh, to go for that. So first of all, what do you need if you want to remotely, remotely monitor temperature and humidity? So here is what you need. You need uh, a small digital sensor again temperature and humidity sensor. They are very cheap like this one is just uh, um, 8 euro and it's tiny it's like that tiny it's really really tiny then you need also a, a Wi-Fi board because uh, you attach basically that tiny sensor to a Wi-Fi board and that board then is able to transmit over Wi-Fi you need also a power supply you have different options here you can either again you use your feed through in your box and just plug it to the wall or you can use a, um, a rechargeable battery, or you can use just uh, a 2AA battery. And uh, uh, we did some calculation and uh, you would, uh, it would be able for you to record temperature and humidity, make one measurement every 10 minutes for about 200 days. So even just two, two batteries last quite long. And thank you, Patrick, for suggesting this option. Patrick is one of our customer and tea students and uh, for proposing that to me that allows me to show that to you so it's not actually my idea it was uh, it was an idea that we received from patrick and uh, i said you connect the two together and uh, i won't now go into the tutorial and detail how to then use a local ip address to extract those data from the sensor via the wi-fi element and then to stream them in a way that you are able also to access that IP address remotely when you're traveling somewhere else in the world. But what I suggest doing, just go on Google and you can simply search for, uh, or, or on YouTube for tutorials about this specific sensor and this specific uh, Wi-Fi controller. Uh, I will write on the screen the name. You just copy paste that into uh, your uh, YouTube search bar and you will find tutorial on how to set up uh, a, a remote controlling of uh, your uh, work condition. Whew, that was a lot of information. 
but I'm not yet done because I want to discuss also which are the advantages and the risk of a Pumidor. Because of course the advantages are quite clear, you want to um, speed up, if you want, the aging of your cake and on top of that you also want to um, decide between a rated dry storage that most of, most of us has at home and a wetter storage that you want to achieve with your pumidor. Warming up some water, I need it and then I continue. So we say the advantages are clear but uh, which are the risks? So the risks are mainly related with a pumidor in which temperature is also controlled and why? Well think about winter, you go in your car, it's cold outside, you start driving and then the, uh, you turn on the heating, the temperature rises, you breathe, you create a water vapor inside the car and then you get condensed water on the pane. Why this is happening? It's happening because hot air can absorb more water but cold than cold air. So you have a very humid hot air inside the car, the pane is very cold, near to the pane of the glass of your car, the air is also cold and there you have condensation. Well, this effect that is nothing else than what happens also at night when uh, um, the temperature instantly drop and you have uh, dew on a meadow, for example, dew formation, exactly the same, the same physical phenomenon and this can happen also with your pour. So think about you warm up your pour in your pumidor, it's hot and humid, you take it out for a few hours because from time to time you want to drink right what you are conditioning, what you are aging and uh, uh, in a few hours the temperature of your cake will drop. If at home you have 18 degrees centigrade it will drop to 18 degrees centigrade. Then you take this relatively cold cake you put it back in the pumidor that is hot and humid and you might have condensation on your cake. You might not see the condensation the way you see it on a pane of the car, but you might still have some macro formation of condensation, so not just molecule, really some uh, small drops if you want on the cake that uh, then will, would result uh, in uh, mold. No. So if you wetten your cake it's not that easy then to dry and if you initiate the formation of mildew, mold, uh, fungi, it will be difficult to be stopped in those humid conditions. So now when does this happen? How warm, which is the difference if you want between cold and hot to, um, to have this phenomenon to occur? Is it so hard to predict? Well, there is a way to do so and let me show that to you now. I will put the link of uh, um, what I'm showing to you in, uh, um, in the description below so that you can actually use uh, and do exactly the same thing that I'm doing, uh, the time uh, actually doing right now. So you see that on this website here, you can write the air temperature. So let's say that in your pomidor you have 32 degrees and let's say that you have 65% uh, humidity. You click on calculate and this calculate the dew point which is 24.6 uh, degrees. So let's say 25 degrees centigrade. So what does it mean? It means that if you take something that is 24, 25 degrees or colder and you put it in a box in which there are 32 degrees centigrade and 65% humidity, you might have formation of water, condensation of water on your cake. So you see, it's not that difficult at all, simply because water at uh, uh, air, sorry, air at 24 degrees centigrade is able to absorb less water than there is in uh, an air at 32 degrees centigrade and 65% humidity. So the air basically close to the cake because the cake entraps also some air. So that air close to the cake is cooler, like the air close to the pane of your car is cooler, and you may have formation of water. So you can use this tool to double check. And this is also pointing out one aspect. When you are conditioning your cake, it's 
better if you first warm up your cake and then you put it in the conditioning box. You don't want to take a cake that is 15 degrees centigrade cold and put it in a warm box and humid because you might have water condensation. So find a way to warm it up. Warming up a cake doesn't take a lot of time, so you can use the same heater and you know, or I don't know, whatever, there are different methods. You can put it on a heating element. You want to raise up the temperature of the cake. And once the cake is warm already, then you can put it in a warm and humid environment without having any risk of uh, condensation. So another disadvantage of, uh, or a risk, maybe not a disadvantage, of the Pumidor is that the Pumidor is a closed box. While in the history of poor, poor has always been stored in free air, either in a room, in a large room. So what happens is that in a very closed box that you keep closed for years, basically, and open maybe once every six months or every year, the air is always the same. So the oxygen, for example, is always the same. It is being used for some oxidation process of the leaves, is not regenerated, you don't have aeration of, uh, of your cake. So what happened is that uh, over the years, maybe it could develop a little bit of a stale taste. It doesn't have to be. I'm just saying that is a risk that we have to consider, right? And this is pretty much it. So you've seen, you've seen that you have a lot of different options for uh, storing poor. If you know more than that, if you have any suggestion or any correction about what I said in this video, please go ahead and write that in the chat in the comment below. Otherwise, this won't be the last video about poor. I have another one that I am preparing in which I will speak about the moisture level, the moisture content in your cake in relationship with the relative humidity or the humidity in general of uh, your storage place and how that plays a role in aging the cake. So if you're interested in this kind of video, go ahead and subscribe our channel and don't forget to give us a like up for all the effort we put in this video. This uh, uh, is uh, the best thank you that you can give to us to support our channel. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope this will be helpful for those of you that are into poor storage and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.